So information assurance is the practice of assuring information and managing risks related to the use, processing, storage, and transmission of information or data and the systems and processes used for those purposes. That's a very long sentence. The way I like to think of IA is it's a practice like Kung Fu. Kung Fu isn't just learning how to kick or punch. It's many, many more things. And that's kind of what IA is. If we're talking about processing, then we're talking about FIPS a lot of the time. I always forget what FIPS stands for, but it's Federal Information Processing Standards. If we're talking about other things from storage to the physical, technical, or administrative controls an organization should have for security, then we could be talking about STIGs. And notice technical is just in between the words physical and administrative controls because NIST has publications like this on security awareness. So there's procedures organizations should follow to enhance security. And I like the last sentence here because it really just wraps up what IA is. It is a superset of information security. I always used to think IA was just a synonym for information security or infosec. But IA is just so very broad. And it's so broad that we're talking about the business outcome or the business perspective in providing security for an organization. So another way to think of IA, it's the process of getting the right information to the right people at the right time. That's such a marketing sounding sentence right there. And down here, they're saying exactly what they said before, what I was trying to say before. IA relates more to the business level and strategic risk management of information and related systems rather than the creation and application of security controls. I'm just noting right here that the more you know about those technical details about the creation and application of security controls, the better off you'll probably be as a person talking about information assurance. They call these people IA practitioners. They say IA practitioners consider corporate governance issues such as privacy, regulatory and standards compliance, auditing, business continuity, and disaster recovery as they relate to info systems. And this long list is probably why they say IA is an interdisciplinary field requiring expertise in business accounting, user experience, fraud examination, forensic science. And they're going to go on and on right there. And when I see words like this, I'm very happy because I like to think of myself as a very broad generalist. Once I figure out how something works, I kind of get bored just mucking around in it. Which brings me to how this process works. They say the information assurance process will begin with the enumeration and classification of information assets to be protected. So that's a logical first step. They're taking inventory. Next, the IA practitioner will perform a risk assessment for those assets. And to better understand this role, I did some research and found someone called this position information assurance officer in relation to this guy who is asking a question about a certificate using OpenSSL, a certificate being changed to FIPS mode. So here's that question. It's closed, but they're asking how to make the server compliant to FIPS 140-2. We scroll down to the answer. This is where you see the reference to an information assurance officer. What I like most about this answer is they give us a link to the STIG viewer for Red Hat, Red Hat STIGs, which as they say is just a convenient way to read these. But there it is, the talk of an information assurance officer or practitioner in the wild. And this is simply in relation to an organization trying to make their server compliant to a federal regulation about processing information. So after that server is configured, the IA head honcho can perform a risk assessment for that server. Now the assessment then considers both the probability and impact of a threat exploiting a vulnerability in an asset. Oh, that's pretty verbose right there as well. But with this assessment's impact consideration, this is measured in terms of cost to the asset's stakeholders. Now I was wondering about how they come up with this number what the formula is, maybe it relates to CVSSs. That's a fascinating scoring system. But they finish with saying the sum of the products of the threat's impact and the probability of their occurring is the total risk to the information asset. So if you somebody asked you, like, what is risk? It's the impact of something happening and the probability of that thing happening. 
This next paragraph is pretty interesting because with the risk assessment complete, the IA practitioner then develops a risk management plan. This plan proposes countermeasures that involve mitigating, eliminating, accepting, which is weird to me but understandable, or transferring the risks and considers prevention, detection, and response to threats. There's a lot to unpack here, and there's a lot of questions I have. I wonder if there's a site I can go to to look at stats that answer questions such as how often are they mitigating versus accepting risk? How pricey is the transfer of risk? Can the organization spend enough logical resources on prevention? I use the word logical there. I suppose that's kind of implied when we're talking about spending money. In this world of IA, there's uh, several frameworks published by standards organizations. I have to delete this comment because as I dig deeper into NIST, the extent of them being a mandate, a law, it's a little cloudy to me. But there is NIST RMF, that's Risk Management Framework, an organization called Risk IT, an organization called COBIT. I don't know how to pronounce that, a PCI DSS, and then this worldwide international one. This will look very familiar to many of you. So these organizations are guiding the development of information assurance practices. So they come up with the framework, then we implement the tools and the policy and the configurations. This one would be more my field, employee training and security awareness. There's fancy terms here like computer emergency response team and computer security incidents response team or what the difference between those two are and I like this last sentence of the paragraph because there just seems to be no way to eliminate all risks the best you could do is just manage, manage them because this field of cybersecurity just a big old cat and mouse game it seems like so to conclude, the IA process is an iterative one in that the risk assessment and risk management plan are meant to be periodically revised and improved upon based on data gathered about their completeness and effectiveness.